What, we some kind of suicide squad? I am Iron Man. You are a toy! I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Server Anakin! I have the high ground! I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. I'm simply saying that life, uh, finds a way. Welcome back to the Big Movie Boys podcast, the only podcast where everything we planned went to complete shit, so now we're just kind of freestyling it. I'm your host, Jeremy Baum, and with me as always is Bob, no nickname this week, Liebel. Yes, hope you guys are ready for a really, really well thought out podcast today. And Ben, insert nickname here, Stitch. Yes, I'm really looking forward to this no format podcast. (laughs) We either have a lot or nothing to talk about this week, only time will tell. We're just going to kind of see how it goes. We are eventually going to play Who is the Biggest Movie Boy? Will Ben be able to retain his throne? Will Bob make the comeback of the century? Or will he have to watch Cats again? (laughs) That would be great. Dude, if I have to watch Cats again, I'm going to fucking lose it. This podcast is either going to be really good or really bad. Well, you're not going to have to watch Cats again. But you may have to watch another terrible movie in the meantime. Um... So yeah, we have nothing really planned. I do have a few very quick topics that we could talk about if you guys had any, any interest in them. I'll just run through. I got six different things here, and then we can go back to whatever one you want to talk about. Uh, the first one I had listed is why 13 Reasons Why is Ruining America. I did finish season four. It's a pretty morally bankrupt show. Uh, Warner Brothers said that they don't believe a standalone Superman movie would be successful right now. I agree. End of discussion. (laughs) That's all we need. (laughs) Uh, We just had the PS5 announcement. I don't know if you guys have any interest in that. I'm wondering if I'm going to get the digital-only version or if I'm going to get the one with this disk drive because otherwise I have to buy a Blu-ray player. Yeah. Is it cheaper, the digital-only? They haven't announced prices yet. What are you leaning towards right now? I feel like I would rather get the digital-only. I mean, when it comes to games, I don't own a physical game. Yeah. But but I do use my PlayStation as a a Blu-ray player. So, yeah, I don't know. That Bug Snacks looks. There's Snack Bugs. What was that game? Bug Snacks. You guys see the trailer for that one? Oh, absolutely not. No, no, I it, It's what an are you island. It's an island full oh, of okay. s- snacks, like f- foods that are all bugs. Is that like a kids game? I don't know what it is. Okay, for PlayStation? Yep. How much is that? That better be- cost ten dollars. That better be free. I don't know. It better come with it when you buy it. Only up. time will tell. Does Xbox, like, the new series, does that come out at, like, the end of the year, too? Yeah, I, I, I searched into it. It's, like, Christmas time. They both, they both I think I'm out. still going to yeah. be Team Xbox. Uh, I don't know. The PS5 thing didn't do anything for me. PS4 is the greatest console I've ever owned. I have 30 games because they all come free. Oh, Dude, just I just can't wait for when it comes out during Christmas. And you Black don't even play Friday. many video games. I don't either. I mean, I don't play video games at all. But, like, for some reason, I want a PS5. That's good. Where, whoever's in charge of marketing, I am. I feel like it's going to be another uh, South Park episode where they do the whole. Console that's what I was war. thinking. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Like as soon as they announced that they were coming out around Christmas, I was like, I hope it's shit. I might have to get one if everyone's going to get a PS Five. I can't be the only person in our friend group with the Xbox. Um, Damn. next order of business: HBO Max check in. Bob, have you even downloaded it? Ben, have you watched anything? I've been. I watched Ad Astra, but that was just on HBO Go. I didn't even use the HBO Max. I uh, I got somebody's password. <laughs> I have not downloaded the app though, but I have somebody's password, so I'm getting close. I haven't. I don't think I've watched anything since last. Was it last week we talked about it? Two weeks ago? Yeah, I think it was two weeks ago. But yeah, I don't think we. I don't think there's there's not like a groundbreaking new show or anything. Nothing's right. really attracting people. Yeah, it's more like when you get to it, you'll get to it. But I don't think it's not like HBO is suffering for viewers. So. Can we go back, actually, to the Superman thing? I know we sort of just... You did. <laughs> I killed that pretty quickly, but it was just going through my mind right there. If they make it, like, an actual good movie... Like, this, the last Superman movies and there, like, when Ben Ben Affleck was the Batman, I just feel like that go-around... Let's Not just good. forget it happened. Get a mulligan. <laughs> Who would you cast? That was my question. That's where I was going. Who's who's the new Superman? Henry Cavill again, but with oh, different God. writers and directors. Well, he was he's, good, yeah. he's a good-looking Superman. Like, he kind of fit the role, but, like, I think he's he's killed it. It's done for him. He can't be Superman again. I w- do you want someone more with like a big name or do you like someone like know. Bradley Cooper? I think it's someone more with like big pecs and big, big pecs. biceps. Big name is just kind of. Here yeah. was my idea. We just give Michael Sarah a lot of steroids <laughs> <laughs> and he's the new Superman. I would watch a Michael Sarah. But, but can you imagine if he got jacked out of his mind like Michael Sarah was ripped? What do you think he's doing during quarantine? He is getting jacked. ready for the role of a lifetime to be Superman. Bob, how can you be a Michael Sarah fan and a Jesse Eisenberg hater? <laughs> I don't Ain't know, a dude. Dane Donfin, by the <laughs> Two way. sides of the same coin. I don't know, dude. 
I guess I just really like super bad. I think that's, <laughs> that might be the thing. No, but who would you cast? Because did you you guys know that rumor about uh what's his name? Our favorite actor, not Mark Wahlberg. Holy shit! Never mind. Actually, Mark Wahlberg should be <laughs> Mark Wahlberg should be Battle Superman. for bus. I, Superman <laughs> goes local. So I was gonna say um. Nicholas Cage was supposed to be Superman like way back. Oh yeah, and there's like actually pictures of him yeah, in, the yeah. in the costume. And who got it instead of him at that time? I think that was when they did the one in like '04. It was some oh, that okay. shitty no name actor. <laughs> that horrible. It was actually like a sequel to the original oh, Superman okay, from yeah. like the '70s. And well, 80s. that would have been incredible. Yeah, I wish. Well, maybe make him Superman. But no, I think I just accidentally stumbled upon who should be Superman is Mark Wahlberg. Obviously, I mean, and it's not Metropolis. It's Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. man, that would be great. Um, what is Mark Wahlberg's Superman kryptonite? Like, it can't be kryptonite. It's got to uh, be like some... Yankees fans, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Yankees win the World Series. Yankee night. <laughs> oh, God. Um, next on my list was... Uh, what, what have you guys watched lately that we haven't already discussed on the podcast? I don't have much personally, no, but... So, yeah, I said I watched Ad Astra. I watched it yesterday and then finished it this morning. I, it was not as good as the first hour and a half I thought was like a really good movie and I liked where they were going and then it just got way too into the relationship between Brad Pitt and his dad who's Tommy Lee Jones that's a movie or that's yeah. a movie yeah Jeremy you saw it like yeah. I don't you saw it when it first came out though you yeah. saw it in theaters so I, I don't know if that gives it a better effect like but it just the first hour and a half I was like this is gonna be I think this is gonna be a really good movie and then at the end I was like I didn't like that movie so much that's how I really felt that's fair I mean it's definitely a slow burn I do think that those movies are better suited for a theater when you have no distractions. Yeah, you can't. I paused it about ten times. Yeah, that, that's not the way to watch <laughs> that movie, in my opinion. Um, I did so after watching that movie. I forget the director's name, but he's he also did the Lost City of Z, Lost City of Z, however you want to pronounce it, since yeah. they're all European. Uh, starring friend of the show Robert Pattinson. And, uh, Hold on, we should cast him as Superman. <laughs> and he can be good too. Yeah, he can be both. <laughs> Are you going to complain? I uh, know, but and then we could redo Superman versus Batman and just play both. <laughs> that would be incredible. But uh, if if you liked Ad Astra at all, I would recommend The Lost City of Z. Another slow burn, but I where I, I kind of What's agree because you've talked about it a lot on the podcast. It was on so Prime. I'm, I'm it was on Prime at least like a year or two ago when I watched it. I think I would give it a shot because. I mean, I didn't hate Ad Astra, and I loved, like, it, it was a different type of, like, outer space movie. It wasn't just following the same format, but, so I guess I would give that a shot. It's got Tom Holland in it. It's got, uh... Oh, when, was, when did this movie come out? Like, two years ago. Oh, okay. Mid 2017. Uh, all people, I like Tom Holland. You Robert love Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Yeah, yeah we and, all love uh, Robert Pattinson. I'm, I'm blanking on the other guy's name who's in it, but he's another big, like, actor. I don't know. But yeah, definitely worth. It's another slow burn. It's a lot of cruising through the Amazon jungle. But I agree that Ad Astro was a little lackluster towards the end. I think Lost City of Z is pretty steady the whole way. Yeah, there's yeah. not as many highs as Ad Astro, but there's not as many lows. That's fair then. I think I would give that a shot. I haven't really, really like watched anything else. No, I, I haven't. Like with the weather getting nicer, I feel like I'm outside more. It's like time right. to, I need something really good to make me. Stay inside. I just want the NBA season to come back. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what I'm waiting for. At this I, point. I actually restarted Avatar, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, spoiler alert. In a few weeks, possibly, we might talk about it. But, um, yeah, I restarted it because I love that show so much. And there's nothing Wait, so else you on. just finished it and you restarted it again? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to pass you probably. <laughs> you probably I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably finish season one tonight. So I <laughs> okay, might get pretty right. deep into season two. So I'm yeah. on, like, episode 15 of season one. You're not telling me season one? <laughs> it's because I've been waiting for my girlfriend to watch one watch it. episode a week? <laughs> I've been watching a lot. Oh, you know what I have been watching? A lot of guys' grocery games. That's my show. Oh. Dude, you're just getting a kick of that. You can't oh, stop watching I it. I'll watch anything with him in it. I love that, man. Oh, it's incredible. He's a great host. But anyway, yeah, th so that's what's got me sidetracked. But now I'm just not going to wait for her to watch it anymore. I'm Why just has Guy go Fieri it. not crossed over into other things? Like other Superman? No, like, <laughs> no, but like you know how like there's like, I feel like a lot of hosts... Like, I don't know, I can't think of, like, one off the top of my head, but, like, there's hosts that start oh, with, like, one thing. And like, they... Chris Harrison is the best, and then he hosted, like, Millionaire. They do a lot of different yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, 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 Or even, like, Nick Cannon is now, like, a host Just on... Just everywhere. Yeah. Like, Ryan Seacrest is on everything. Yeah. yeah. How come Guy Fieri hasn't crossed over into other non-food-related television show <laughs> host roles? Does like he, he should... want to do anything non-food-related? But don't you judging by the way he dresses, probably not. He should host, like, some car show. He just he looks like that. Yeah. 
I'm pretty sure there's a like a hot rods and hot dogs sort of like crossover. <laughs> that guy, I'm not even kidding. I think that's a show. Because he's if got dinner, drive-ins and dives and like all that. Guy Fieri definitely is involved in some sort of like hot rod car show. He is the Food Network. He's yeah. Just, if he. But wouldn't you want to see him as like the host of like American Idol? Hey everybody, I'm Guy Fieri. Welcome I, to American Idol. I'd be way more inclined to watch it if that was the oh, case. Oh yeah, I would. Yeah, th- that would I'd probably triple their viewers if Guy <laughs> Fieri was the, the host of, of American Idol. Is American Idol even on the air? Yeah. Uh, okay. They, they did like a fake out. They're like, "This is our last season ever." Bye, everybody. And then Ryan Seacrest like zooms in on him. He's like, "For now." And then like a few weeks later, it got announced that they were going to that they got announced that they were going to ABC. Yeah, well, they it was on ABC, Netflix and it, they finished it during the quarantine, and everyone was, like, performing from home. It was it was shitty. Is that real? Yes. Yeah, you, no, you're not joking? No, no I'm not joking. Serious. It I was so that. weird. I watched, like, a couple of clips, and it's like, I mean, as someone who's not really a fan of the show, I was kind of laughing at it. Like, it this looked, is kind of yeah. ridiculous. They were obviously just wanted to, their message was, oh, we need to, we want to send you music in this time of need or whatever. It's like, no. you obviously just want money, and you yeah. need to finish the we show. We want our advertisers to have something to advertise <laughs> exactly. on in this time of need. That's all it was. It felt like, I mean, they did a good job still producing. They sent all the contestants, like, the best equipment possible, but it was just still felt really forced that they just wanted to see It was bad, over. yeah. I just can't believe that they still even have music TV shows, like The Voice. You know The Voice? Because they do There's two seasons. Too many. They have like 30 seasons of The Voice. They do two seasons a year. How are these people? Are any of these people becoming famous no. from Name it? one winner of The Voice. I can name the first five American Idols, probably. No, you couldn't. I can name the first five American <laughs> Idols. Okay, Let's no go. problem. All right. Number one, Kelly Clarkson. Everybody knows that. Number two, Ruben Studdard. Number three, Fantasia Barino. Number four, um, that Soul Patrol guy. The guy that the guy that was 25 years old, but he had fully white hair. Do you Is remember that Taylor him? Hicks? Taylor Hicks, yeah. Um, and number five... Was number five Jordan Sparks? Or she didn't win. I just I just five? got it up. So go through your list again. Uh, Kelly Clarkson, Ruben Studdard, uh, Fantasia Brino, Taylor Hicks. Was he five? Yeah, he was five. Oh, who was four? Kind of a big one here. <sighs> Taylor Hicks. Oh, was four um, Carrie Underwood? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> All and right, then, I can okay. I can tell let's you. Let's see the, how far you can go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually. I don't think I have anything after that. But I think I can name the second place finisher also. Clay is that Aiken. Not Chris Clay Aiken was Ruben Studdard. That's all I know. Clay yeah, Aiken. you were. You were oh, you were a claymate. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what his fans are. No, are the I'm just someone who Taylor remembers Hicks, Clay Aiken. <laughs> Taylor Hicks looks sixty. In this unknown, picture. unknown fact that not a lot of people know. Do you know the guy that finished second in the first season of American Idol? I forgot his name. Or oh, Justin Guarini. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. No, but do you know those Dr. Pepper commercials with the, that he's guy? He's the little, he's little that sweet. Guy. Yeah, he's, he's little he's, sweet. Yeah, he's he's that guy. Oh my god, isn't that amazing? He's the sweet one. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the first season of American Idol runner up is now in Dr. Pepper commercials. How I awesome! Guess that is the that, American dream. I guess that's good for his career. But wow, I don't think I can do anything past season five. Jordan Sparks didn't win. She was six. She won six. That's what Google tells me. Damn. And then I don't. After that, I don't know. I know Scotty McCreary. Just I think I jokes guy, yeah, about yeah. him. But Where, how do we even get to that? I have no <laughs> idea. Say, now that we move past the American Idol portion <laughs> of my list here, um, to take it way back pre-American Idol, I was just going to say that since our quarantine watch list episode, basically four minutes after we finished recording that, I watched the entirety of Avatar: The Last Airbender. Started Legends of Korra. Mm-hmm. So Bob two really got you Avatar the anime. of the Airbender books. So I've just been like knee deep in that. And then the only I think the only like movie that I watched that wasn't for the podcast, I watched Drive last night. And that was just out of you just saw it on what it, was that? It's been on, on my list, yeah, forever. It's on Netflix. Did you guys see you just brought up Legend of Korra and reminded me, did you see Nickelodeon tweeting out today? They confirmed that SpongeBob, Korra, and then another character that from some show I'd never seen are all LGBTQ uh Plus, characters yeah and wait spongebob is spongebob yep. is i guess that's been actually by that. presumed no, asexual yeah. for like a long time everyone's like thought that but i guess i came out and conform- confirmed it today but cora as well and i guess like i was reading about it and nickelodeon like bought that's part of the reason why you can't get like all the seasons of legend Korra in the same place because like they botched like the fourth season or something there was supposed to be a female female kiss and they like censored it and they didn't want to put it on their network. Really? Yeah. Because oh, that's part of the reason why it's hard to get all four seasons. Like, CBS All Access has season one and two, but... Which is how f- I've been watching it. And that's kind of weird that 
that yeah. you're mentioning that only because like there's like some pretty overtly progressive messaging in the first two seasons at least yeah like there there's a big... even avatar there's a lot of like anti-sexism things like that's a pretty right, yeah. common theme in it but yeah this show that came out i don't know seven years after avatar the last airbender like there's there's stuff like there's a big stadium fight is like a big mm-hmm. part of the series like a I don't know, like a league version of airbending battles or uh, bending battles yeah. in general. And, like, the announcer is, like, welcoming the crowd and it's like, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone else. So I was like, oh, this is, like, clearly, like, meant to be a very progressive theme yeah, or thing that they're it, pushing in this show, which is just more of weird many. that, like, they, I guess they censored a female, female kiss. Yeah, why, yeah, if they were being progressive, why would they? I just thought I'd be ripping them apart on, like, like, quoting that nickelodeon tweet saying like you botched season four cora like you did all this and that uh, actually i take that back i think i may be confusing legends of cora with one of the books i bought because one of the graphic novels i think it, it was actually the graphic novel where of avatar yeah of avatar so this takes place like after the show but that's where that quote's from and then there's also like the first as far as I remember, confirmed like gay couple that they mm-hmm. the gang saves at, in one of their little side journeys. And I was like, oh, so at some point, they started like really pushing their progressive messaging, which yeah. again they had in the first show. That's another of, reason like, why I think this show's so good, though. Like, like, and we're not going to talk about this show itself, at least after our last Airbender that in depth. We're going to save that for a later episode. But um, no, it's just like it's no, rewatching is something I see a lot. I think right that now. comes really cool. from them like being so prepared, like the character mm-hmm. backstory. Like that's the big thing about anime that we talked about the one time is just how they they just the character development is so in depth. There's that so much like they're obviously building. looking for other ways to like build characters, and that's like one way to do it. Yeah, uh, the last last thing I had in my notes, um, just a quick game I had come up with. It's called uh, "Was Meryl Streep in this movie?" Ben, just go ahead and name any movie for me. Uh, any of the Fast and Furious movies. Yeah, Meryl Streep was in those. Bob, name a movie for me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the hardest question I've ever been asked. Um. That's a tough one. Spencer Confidential. Yeah, Meryl Streep was in that okay, movie. Yeah. She was in that movie. You don't know who Meryl Streep is? No, clearly. So we learned last <laughs> week that I don't know who Meryl Streep is. I did a little more research, and I've never seen a movie Meryl Streep has been Which in. Which is incredible. I think she's, like, not that we're the market audience for Meryl Streep movies, but she's considered like the greatest actress of all time. And the fact that you <laughs> mixed her up with Helen Mirren, not to say Helen twice. Mirren's not a good actress. Yeah, twice. <laughs> she's a good actress, but she, like, one's British. <laughs> so I don't know how you got to I have confused. another confession. I don't think I've seen a movie with Meryl Streep either. I mean, I definitely have seen The Devil Wears Prada at least once. I've so. seen parts of that when they play it on E sometimes, but uh, that's about it. I don't, yeah. I'm trying to think. Oh, she was in those um, Lemony Snicket uh, movies. Lemony, you know, uh, a series, a series of, of unfortunate events. Yeah. She was in that movie. You've seen that one, Jerry. I feel like I've seen the movie. She was the one lady who lived in the house that was going to fall into the lake. Are you sure? Because for some reason, I feel like Meryl Streep would No, I, re- I watched it recently. You did? Facts. Because she, even, we, we said the same I was, thing last no. week when you are like, yeah, she's in Fast and Furious. And, and we're, we're like, are you sure? Don't even check <laughs> no. this. Don't check this, but it's <laughs> you definitely guys true. just went, sure. No, one no, of us I said, said it. Yeah, no, I Ben go, did. He did. I go, is that true? She was in Fast and Furious? But I was like, upset I was like, she at was. that point, I was a little drunk, so I was just like, you know, fuck, like, I, <laughs> I've never seen one of her movies. Fuck, maybe she is in Fast and Furious. Well, here's yeah, the thing, I was ben, just Ben's it. saying she's the greatest actress of all time, so obviously she would have been in Fast and Furious if she was that good. True. That's true. Well, you know, yeah, we haven't seen think. Fast 9 yet, so she could be in it, for all That's we true. know. That's true. John Cena's in it, so Ma- Meryl Streep is probably in it as well. If I see John Cena and Meryl Streep in the same movie, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking through Meryl Streep's IMDb. I didn't see the post. Never saw that one. I got, uh, okay, I got a better one. Try to name five Meryl Streep movies. The Devil I mean, Wears Prada. I, Kramer I versus Kramer. I'll look you square in the eye and tell you she's <laughs> in every movie. I don't know. No insult to Meryl Streep, but like, I guess I I know always that she's. I mean, I've I've watched the Oscars before. I know what happens at those things. She usually wins, and and we never watched the movies. And I've never seen them. Yeah. I feel kind of bad. We're such a shitty podcast. We have the best <laughs> actress of all time. We've never seen any of her movies other than the Devil Wars Prada. And only one of us has seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she was in the Lemmy Snicket movie. I'm pretty sure I've seen this movie. I have no memory of it. No, that's about right. I watched the beginning of the Netflix Lemmy Snicket 
That show was terrible. It was so bad. I didn't I think I watched two one. episodes. I think I watched it because of Neil Patrick Harris, and I hated it. Hated every second of it. I got through like two episodes. While we're on the topic of me being wrong, should we talk about uh, Space Force? Oh, yeah, we can. Yes, we should. Because guess what? <laughs> that show sucks. I think I told Bob that he was dead fucking wrong when he said it was going to be bad. I couldn't be more dead right because that. I, I actually watched it and I had no desire to watch it. Did you watch it. the whole show? I did I not watched finish season one. Half of the first episode. And I was like, this <laughs> is so unfunny. Well, and that's just, not giving it like, a fair and yeah. honest try. I couldn't get past it, dude. I just like couldn't. I was like, I am just not enjoying anything about this. And I get like, there's a lot of shows like, we talk about Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul all the time. And like, just you could watch. Slow burn. But yeah, those just, are. But those comedies, comedies, different. comedies have to come out. But like the way, that was the way I was looking at it. I was like, okay, like maybe like the first episode isn't good and like it's going to get better and better. But it was so ungood that, that I was just like, I cannot watch any more of this. Like I'm just, I just, I didn't think I laughed once. I didn't think I smiled. <laughs> Jeez, you were just angry. I think I, <laughs> ended up, <laughs> I think I ended up watching four episodes, and I may have exhaled out of my nose once. I think there was one line that John Malkovich had about like the the monkey who killed the dog. He's always like, a delight. He though. called uh, instead of Curious George, he goes, "You guys worry about murderous George," and that line <laughs> got me. But other than that, I think he was the only funny character to me. Steve Carell, obviously, like The Office is my favorite show, so I love him. But, but he's like, just—he's doing a parody of himself in The Office in this almost, show because like, he's—that's what I, I can't like get past his it. voice. His voice annoys me in this show, like how he's trying to play like a general voice almost. Yeah, I don't—I don't know what it is the, about the this. Michael Scott character. You can believe that that guy would climb through the ranks of a Pennsylvania paper sales company, even if yes. he is pretty inept. I don't buy the same thing for a four-star general heading no. the Space Force. And I guess he's not hes not quite as like comically inept as he is as yeah, Michael yeah. Scott, but I don't know. Maybe he's, He shouldn't be a general. I think that's kind of the point, though, Like just under the Trump administration that he would sure. somehow make. Yeah, it's make, clearly a, a rib at them. Yeah. But at the same, so then just do the office model, do cutaways, interview characters, make it like... You think that, uh, because it was Greg Daniels and him, they were probably like, well, we can't do that again. Yeah, but they did it again for Parks and Rec, and that show's great too. I mean... True. Yeah, I feel like if they actually had Greg done Daniels, that... I mean, least, I think it would have been better. It like, would have been better, better like than that, what it was. But like, they probably didn't want to be just doing the same exact shit that they've always done, but I definitely would have rather had that, like, have it be like a behind the scenes, like government look at the new space force what like, ex- yeah what exactly did you guys tell me say to me when you said that i it was said the be cast like- is incredible because i i love ben schwartz i like john malkovich and i love steve Carell. i was like this is gonna be great no what else did you guys said something else about me like eating shit or something <laughs> like i can't wait for bob to eat those shit words <laughs> oh, God, i definitely won't go back and listen to that oh part. yeah if you're one of the five <laughs> listeners from <laughs> week what week is that week one on the podcast we, yeah, tweet at us and let us know what exactly Jeremy said and how he was wrong and I was right. Yeah, Jeremy was rude. I remember, I think I was but I'm not going to <laughs> I remember saying, Bob, you bring up an excellent point. We should, you know, not get too overexcited until we see what the final product is. And it turned out to be does that disappointing. Get a, does that get a second season? I mean, you, did people you, probably watched you, it. You didn't finish it, did you? No. But if 13 Reasons Why I can get four seasons, then there's no reason that show can't get two seasons. Yeah. You're, you're the only one here who's watched, who's suffered through 13 Reasons Why, and you've done it ironically. As, as a person who only watched That's two seasons... Man. It's like it's, watching a, it's a, bad show. a train crash into a hospital <laughs> that then explodes and is lit on fire. You just can't keep your it's eyes away from now, it. It's Dumbo now, right? Supposedly, oh. they've killed enough teens off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Like, not, like... In the show, God. like four high schoolers or more have died, and then in real life, they surge the the rate of teen suicide. Was that more from the first season, though? Yeah, but uh, the morals just get worse and worse, worse as the season. And seasons they just try on. to build it as we're trying to like start a discussion, but it's really more. Has it always been money. bad? Because I remember when season one came out, a lot of people were talking about it. Like, is it did it get progressively worse? Yes. But like, was season one actually bad? Um. I mean, for yes me, and no. I thought season one was all right. It was kind of more like soap opery. Because I almost me, but... watched it when season one was out and everyone was talking about it. I was like, oh, maybe I'll check this out. But then, like, I just feel like everything I've heard about it in the past few years has been like, wow, this show's as like season two bad. sucked. Like, it, I did not like season two. They went like the school shooter route. They almost did. Yeah, they tried. Like, Never they a good to. route to go. I don't and think then, that's like, ever paid yeah, off. And then, so I was like, I remember season three like coming out, and I'm like, well, that's a show. I just won't watch it anymore. When I stopped liking a show, kind of like The Walking Dead, when it stopped being good to me, I yeah. was just out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a show that is targeted towards children, sells itself as an accurate depiction of high school, and in an effort to start a conversation. 
if you're an adult, it, I don't think we have a lot of parents listening to this podcast, but if you have a child Other than our own. in the high school or younger demographic, don't let them watch this show. Um, just for fun, I have a list here of things that the main character, Clay Jensen, has done in seasons three and four. Clay? Is he a Claymate? I don't he's think a big fan he, of he think must have, he, honestly the age he's at he might be named after Clay Aiken the <laughs> actor is a musician wow. Dylan Minnette he's right? inspired by the great Clay Aiken here's some of the things he did in seasons three and four he stepped in front of a school shooter okay didn't tell anyone that the almost school shooter attempted to shoot up the school all right all right disposed of the almost school shooter's guns he disposed of the guns held a gun at another student as you should covered up a murder okay. and framed another deceased student all right. Hey, little spoiler alerts here. Was accused of attempted rape after he walked into a bedroom <laughs> in a frat house while on a college tour okay, where he was alone with an unconscious female student. All right. He broke out of a mental hospital. He stole an officer's gun and wielded it in a school. This sounds right. like a parody. He incited a literal riot. This is all the same kid? Yes. He set his principal's car on fire, which then exploded outside of the school next to a group of students. He wow. walked into a police station and yelled, I have a gun. He should probably be in jail. He should probably be in an asylum. Spoiler alert, do you want to know the consequences for all of these and many more? This is not a comprehensive list. Can I guess? Yes. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He gets into a college <laughs> after bombing his college interview, and he and gets he away with covering... His principal's car? Like, that should be... Who does he know? Like, like does he have, like... Well, how does he get out of this stuff? Does he have, like, a connection? Because the show is morally and bankrupt. And he's white. Okay, that's just, That's the... Yeah. <laughs> White privilege, probably. Dude, it's absurd. I can't even look. Like, That's ridiculous. I can't even That's describe so annoying. So you watch it, do you laugh at it? Is that how you get through it? I, if you were watching it seriously, there's no way you could get through it. Seasons two and three, it was like kind of funny how bad it was. And then season four, I got a little sad. I'm like, wow. Like I thought season four was where people finally have repercussions for their actions. Completely out. Does it do opposite. numbers though? Like, Does it do well? Like, Is it like trending on Netflix right I now? I think there's like a pretty big following of like... The demographic, the age group oh, that they're that's, targeting. That's really bad Which then if sad, all those yeah. things that you just said are portrayed on that show. And the demographic is people of that age. Like, like I remember watching the trailer that's for this season on YouTube. And the comments are from people who seem to be like invested in the show and the characters on the show. Oh, that's so bad. And saying like, oh, Clay has such bad luck. He keeps <laughs> like, <laughs> all this bad stuff keeps happening to him. Like, because he keeps making terrible decisions and no one's getting him any help. He should be in prison, or at the very least, in a mental institute with doors that are locked. Yeah. Anyway, that's my rant about 13 Reasons Why. Um, 13 Reasons Why Not to Watch It There. Uh, there's plenty of those videos. <laughs> uh, any other uh, just random bullshit topics you guys want to bring up before we move into our challenge this week? No, um, I think really that's everything, me. yeah. I think we covered a lot of things right there, actually. I don't think Bob's watched anything, so just Avatar. That's basically it. I watch um, Everybody Everybody Loves Raymond and King of Queens on the TV land. Wow, shout out to King of Queens. Yeah. I'm more of a King of Queens guy than I am Everybody Loves Raymond. Everybody Loves Raymond is a great show. Which one do you like better, though? Mm. Put it on the record. That's hard. Really? That's hard for me. Wow. Yeah. Ray Romano, a great Italian-American. Got to always appreciate that. But Kevin James... Is just a great like every man like character and he's actually funny in that show. He's funny and it's so sad because like he'll never be funny again. Because no, he had another CBS show that was the same. They literally brought his wife. It wasn't that show. It wasn't <laughs> doing well, and they're like, you know how we can make this better? <laughs> we, we'll just make it fucking King of Queens. We'll bring in the same <laughs> actor. Really was. They killed off the wife. I'm pretty sure on yeah. that show. And, in and a comedy, he, and brought in... And he remarried his wife from King of Queens. <laughs> yes. And I think the numbers went drastically up, because I watched the show again. <laughs> because I was like, oh my god, King of Queens too. <laughs> no, oh, that's hard for me. Um, well, I was talking about this a few days ago, actually, with my brother. Like, those network sitcom comedies, those are not good anymore. No. I mean, they're different. They're like... They're I mean, obviously... They're just geared towards, like, everyone 50 and up at yeah, this point. Yeah, but, like, when, like, The Office and Parks and Rec and stuff were out like that, like, they had... They those. don't try new things. They don't try that any That was, different like, the formats. last time there was new things. But, like, when it comes to, like, a traditional, like, sitcom-style comedy, the ones they make now, horrible. But, like, Seinfeld is obviously my number one. Will always be. That show kills me every yes. time. Like, Yes, Dear, King of Queens... Everybody loves Raymond, all those that are around at the same time. For some reason, I watched all of those. I would probably have to put King of Queens above Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah, I think it was just... On record, yeah. I'll say it. I agree with that. I, I didn't watch That's yesterday brave as much, of you, but... Bob. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that with us. King of Queens is a great show. King of Queens but is a great show. you know show. what the uh, 
this a similar factor between like I said my number one Seinfeld and King. Sounds Queens. like you just like Jerry Stiller. I love Jerry Stiller. <laughs> I I on, and he plays the same character basically. That's well they don't fix what isn't broken you know. He is <laughs> literally probably one of the funniest supporting characters in the history of anything that's been filmed. When he passed away, everyone just brought up like it was like a fight down the middle. I didn't know. I just assumed some people pe- would like him from Seinfeld. No, way some more. people. There's some big King of Queens people that like yeah. him more in that. I think you. No, I like him more. In well, Seinfeld. he's a bigger role in uh, King of Queens because he's yeah. actually living in the house. But but he has funnier moments in Seinfeld. Yes, true. Truly, some of the funniest things ever shown on television. Well, if. You're a longtime listener of the Big Movie Boys podcast. You know who you are. The one person that we're talking to right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fill you in on what we did in episode three. So we did the first installation of the Big Movie Boys presents Who is the Biggest Movie Boy? The challenge that time was that we randomly selected two movies. We had to guess which one made more money at the box office. I have to say, Bob did get screwed over in that one. I got fucked. You got the easiest. You got Iron Man for one of your movies. I had some easy movies. (laughs) Ben may have been handed the crown, which is why he is still currently the biggest movie boy. We remember that Bob lost, and the consequence of losing who is the biggest movie boy, regardless of the actual challenge itself, is that you have to watch a punishment movie and return the following week with a 500-word report slash review on that movie. Bob desperately wanted to watch Cats. He was very disappointed he missed the theatrical run. Fortunately, he was able to rent it for the low, low price of five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. dollars <laughs> God, that was, that, that was the punishment. And, uh, yes, he filled us in on the gaps that we had on Cats. Uh, this week, the challenge is going to have to do with IMDb Trivia. The way this is going to work is we each picked three movies. We picked a an entry from IMDb Trivia for those movies, and then we created our own bit of trivia, which is actually completely made up, completely false. So we're going to go around the horn. We'll start with Ben because he is the reigning champ. He'll tell us what movie he picked. He'll read his uh, IMDb Trivia fact and his fake fact in whatever order he chooses. Bob and I will have to guess which one Ben made up. If we guess which one he made up correctly, we get a point. We're working independently. And if we guess incorrectly, then Ben gets the point. Then we'll continue around. We'll do it uh, for a total of three movies each, and we'll see who has the most points. We'll be named Biggest Movie Boy at the end. Whoever has the least points will then have to figure out what punishment movie they have to watch. I'm going to guarantee victory. (laughs) (laughs) A bold uh, move, if you risky. don't remember, that was Bob's <laughs> final words before he started watching Cats. Well, guess what? Cats is off the list, so I don't have to watch it again. There can't be anything worse than that. There's plenty worse than that on the list, I promise you that. So, Ben, we'll start with you. What movie did you pick, first of all? All right, we'll go with one of my top fivers, Interstellar. Bob, mm-hmm. you haven't seen it. Jeremy has seen it once. Uh, Here we go. Matthew McConaughey broke his ankle while filming the climactic scene with Matt Damon, and a stunt double had to finish the rest of those scenes. Okay. Anne Hathaway got hypothermia while filming in Iceland. Hmm. I'm. Iceland isn't cold, and isn't isn't Iceland warm? And Greenland's cold. Isn't that like the thing that's like awkward about them? I mean, I, why am I helping we're, you? We're not working the together. The first one's so. fucking true. I was also inclined to go with the first one. So either Bob and I both get points or Ben gets two points here. That was the lie. I no! got two points. Yes, I will look it up now. The, <sighs> the full truth. Anne Hathaway suffered from hypothermia while filming in Iceland due to the fact that her astronaut suit was open while filming scenes in the icy water. Son of a bitch. Two points for the Benster. Ben off to a solid start. He wants to defend that title. You should edit that part that I said about uh, Greenland and Iceland out because I don't know <laughs> if that's true. <laughs> I don't know where I heard that. But <laughs> we are not, not the not big geography suit. boys. We are the big movie boys. Bob got both geography and movies incorrect there. Actually, I'm pretty sure you're right about the geography. Right, okay, but good. Hey, if you're listening, one of the five listeners, you let us know on Twitter at Big Movie Boys. <laughs> Uh, I'll go next, since I came in middle last time. (laughs) The first movie I picked was Shrek. Mm -hmm. My two facts, in no particular order. Test audiences gave such glowing reviews of Shrek that Jeffrey Katzenberg greenlit the production of Shrek 2 before the first movie had even entered theaters. Shrek received his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Fuck. Second one's true. 
Don't say anything yet, Jerry. Right? Uh, Second one's true. No wait. Bob's That's what Bob in. said. Second one's true. I'm locked in. All right. I don't know. I feel like you would have went overboard. I'm gonna go with the first one was true. Shrek received his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame is true. I saw it. That's why I know. <laughs> I was there. I've seen it. I think I have <laughs> a picture of it on my familiar, phone. familiar, but yeah. So you guys each got a point, right? Because I got it wrong, and Jer- and Bob got it right, and two points are available every time. True. Did you think I made up the Hollywood Walk of Fame thing? Yeah. Is yeah, I thought you, you picked the other one. I picked the other one. Okay. Yeah. I knew that. This is going to get confusing when we disagree like that. Somebody needs to write. I got the points. It's 2-1-1 okay. one, one after still two movies. So All Bob's right. up. All right, gentlemen. I picked for my first movie, Rush Hour 1. Shocker. Okay. This film inspired the creation of the website Rotten Tomatoes. Jackie Chan had never even met Chris Tucker in person until two months into the filming when they had, then they had their first scene together. Two months into filming? Wait, give me the first one again. First one was, this film inspired the creation of the website Rotten Tomatoes. The second one, Jackie Chan had never even met Chris Tucker until two months into the filming when they had their first scene together. I'm going to go with the Rotten Tomatoes one is true. Jeremy? I feel like you wouldn't have made that one up. I, I'm conflicted because I feel like... I agree with Ben where I don't think Bob would have made that one up, but at the same time, I feel like I would know that if Rush Hour. But I'm, I'm going to agree with Ben. I think that Rush Hour inspired the creation of Rotten Tomatoes. You boys are both correct. Let me read off the entire um, thing that I pulled this from. This film inspired the creation of the website Rotten Tomatoes. Or Tomatoes. <laughs> Rot- Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Different website. They don't even review movies on it. <laughs> uh, site founder Sean Duong is a big Jackie Chan fan and built the website to collect reviews for all of Chan's Hong Kong. All of Chan's. Wait, what? This isn't even. This Bob learned how to English. read on the podcast. Well, collect reviews for all of you. Chan's Hong Kong movies, is what this should say, as they were being released in the United States. He coded the site in two weeks, putting it up shortly before the release of this film. Rotten Tomatoes is now one of the most uh, notable sources for movies re- reviews, and the tomato meter rating is used to judge a film's success and used in advertising blah, and blah, award blah. promotions. Bunch of bullshit, basically. Yeah. But apparently, this knew you wouldn't have. That would have been. Yeah, a, you should have included that, that really whole thing. Clever. I would have guessed you wrote that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this is like horribly <laughs> written, and I would like to fact check this because i have no idea if that's actually true. no we don't we that's, don't have that's the do best that. part about imdb trivia you don't have to fact check it you just take it as gospel <laughs> well after one round i have three points jeremy has two points bob has one point Ooh, Fuck. sounds familiar Fuck this. this. all right sounds here we go familiar. my Round's second good. movie was dodgeball ben stiller broke three cameras in succession filming one scene vince vaughn and ben stiller Quote unquote, got ready for this role by joining an intramural dodgeball league for six weeks and lost in the championship round. This is, these are good. <laughs> uh, can you read them one more time, actually? First one? First one? Just read the first one, yeah. Ben Stiller broke three cameras in succession filming one scene. I think that's true. I think the intramurals is, you made that up. I, I'm going to agree with Jeremy and say that the same. Damn it. You guys are right. <laughs> so you guys each got a point. I think I'd, I'd heard somewhere about the cameras being broken the, the rest saying? of that one was that he also hit his wife yeah okay that, that sounds familiar I, I have heard that somewhere. how long did you say that in your lie they were in an intramural six weeks that's see if you that, if that you might have been it, true i'm gonna write that in the if trivia. you had made that shorter i would have believed it but like that's a long time hey they didn't know they were gonna make the championship round <laughs> oh. i feel like i would have like we've seen dodgeball so many you would have heard, yeah, yeah, heard about yeah, that i would have heard about that all right I will go next. My second movie I chose was Bird Box, even though I wrote Bid Box. But I meant Bird Box. You typed it while not looking. My two (laughs) facts, very on brand. My two facts, in no particular order. Trent Reznor told Variety that he felt scoring this movie was a waste of time because, quote, they mixed the music so low you couldn't hear it anyway. No way Jer came up there. Colson Baker, variety. a.k.a. Machine Gun Kelly, admitted in an interview with Complex to having fallen asleep at the movie's premiere. Wow, those are actually great. Gr- right, Jer- we should peek behind the curtain here. Jeremy actually took the time to do yeah. this last Jeremy night. Jeremy thought about, about this for an entire week. week. Let's peek even further <laughs> behind Benjamin the curtain. came up with these so about when 30 I minutes ago. I texted both of you <laughs> last night this idea, and I made these and up 10 both- minutes before you got here. 
Yes, that that is true. That's ten right, minutes but, we didn't have. But Jeremy, I'm gonna need those again because those are both <laughs> really good. Holy <laughs> shit, those are really good. Are they both true? <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. That would be fucked. <laughs> the first one. Trent Reznor told Variety that he felt scoring the movie was a waste of time because, quote, they mixed the music so low you couldn't hear it anyway. Number two, Colson Baker, a.k.a. Machine Gun Kelly, admitted in an interview with Complex to having fallen asleep at the movie's premiere. All right, for me, I'm going to go with the the first one is true and that you made up the Machine Gun Kelly one. I'm going to say the Machine Gun Kelly one is true. I'm going to say the opposite of Ben. Ben, you are correct. I made up Machine Gun Kelly. I actually picked this movie... Because I thought I could do something. I was going to make up a fake fact about the score, about the music in it, because I knew Trent Reznor did it, but the score is basically obsolete. Read that trivia fact. I was like, that's even better than what I was going to make up about it. So then I just made up something about MGK. Yeah, that's why I, I figured you wouldn't have said that. Well, I didn't know you knew who Trent Reznor was, so I was like, well, he obviously just read that one. I, I don't know. I told you. 4-4-2 four, four, at this point, Bob. You need to... <sighs> All right. Uh, you, you need two points here. You need to stick stuff. I got you. I got you here. Uh, the second film I picked was Rush Hour 2. Is that uh, is that in relation to Rush Hour 1? Yeah. Same cinematic universe. Too. Okay. I just, yeah, make sure. just um, loosely related? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first one is Don Cheadle only agreed to do this movie if he could fight Jackie Chan and speak Chinese in the movie. <laughs> sounds fake as hell. <laughs> my second one... The working title of this movie was Red Dragon's Delight. Oh my god, I really hope you didn't make that one up. Um, I'm going to go with the first one is true. That the Don, or the, that the first one is false, second one is true. I'm agreeing, the second one has to be true. Okay, uh, you guys are wrong. Oh! The first one is true! Red Dragon's oh Delight was completely made up by me, but that was solid. that's the name of the casino at the end. That's where I came up with that. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Impressive. But John Cheadle apparently only agreed to do this movie if he could fight Jackie Chan. Why would Chinese. he say that? I what definitely thought you made that up. Neither in the movie. If you've seen the, this, Don they Cheadle's let him in the do movie it for, and then cut it? Yeah, Don Cheadle's in the movie for like five seconds. And if you actually go through the credits, he's not listed in the credits. Because I remember I was watching it. It's obviously a few years ago. This was uh, like 2000 or something. And I was like, that looks like Don Cheadle. But, like, he looks different, obviously, because I only know him from, yeah, the like, Iron Man, Avengers yeah. and stuff. I feel like... And I, I was just like, okay, I'll watch the credits. Like, let me just confirm that was Don Cheadle. And I was like, he's not in the credits. Oh, <laughs> weird. So, I don't know. I, I feel like that's the one Rush Hour movie that I never see is on. It's always Rush yeah. Hour or Rush Hour 3. Because Rush Hour 1's always on, like, prime time, like, 8 o'clock. <laughs> and then 3's always on at, like, 2 a.m. You're never just, like, hanging around at, like... 10-ish when when rush hour two is on you know <laughs> it's either you're really drunk and you're home super late and you're like fuck rush hour three or it's you, like you were doing nothing yes like prime you pre rush hour one you pre they're always a, a marathon <laughs> you pregame during rush hour you're out during rush hour two you're back <laughs> drunk eating food at rush hour three that's how it works uh, that is my paradise Wow. That's how Bob knows what time it is. <laughs> we are tied through two rounds with one round. Yeah, I really four, didn't think four, you guys four. were going to fall for that one. I'm pretty excited. Well, wow, that was good. You needed a two points. Yeah. If we're uh, peeking behind the curtain, we might as well just say that we have no idea what the tiebreaker is going to be. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'll be fun. We'll have to deal with that when Maybe we get to it. Hopefully we don't have that. All right. Here we go. My third movie was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Here we go. Uh, the flamethrower scene at the end of the movie resulted in the fire department being called to make sure a wildfire didn't start. Quentin Tarantino considered shooting this movie entirely in black and white. Wow, these are kind of good. Because there's that black and white scene, and obviously after the after credits are black and white too. Or now there's more than one black and white scene. Did he consider... I'm going to say that the black and white is false i don't think i heard anything about him why would he want to make this one black and white is the question going through my head i'm gonna say that that one's false as well i'm gonna agree with bob that was the truth no i will now look it up to prove my point here it is on imdb quentin tarantino was so determined to avoid the typical cliches of a 60s period piece that he even considered shooting the film in black and white two points for me you with, guys are with an asterisk for, next yeah. to it. I don't. I don't like all this rephrasing of the uh, IMDb trivia, but it is what Bob it is. also did that. So it's That's just an right. asterisk for both of us. I guess uh, I'll be the only one who plays by the rules. My final movie that I chose was Drive, having just seen it last night. My two pieces of trivia, in no particular order. Ryan Gosling was such a late addition to the cast that they ended up cutting nearly half of his lines, which is why he has so few in the film. 
admitted that the opportunity to talk about Breaking Bad with Brian Cranston was what convinced him to take the role. Number two, although many stunt drivers are credited, Ryan Gosling did a number of stunts, in, stunts himself after completing a stunt driving crash course. I'm going to go with the first one was true, the second one you made up. I'm going to agree. You're both wrong. Damn. Shit, Bob is not doing good here. Yeah. It is 6-6-4. Six, six, Bob needs us both to get this wrong. We're going to have a three-way fucking tie. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I can't wait. It's going to be Well, you guys still have to... Oh, no, it doesn't matter because I'll be last. Yeah, so but I, basically I think need... we would... Would you still want to do one to see who... We have to see who the winner is, yeah. Yeah. All right, my third movie is Rush Hour 3. Uh, first I'll say, one. didn't see it coming. <laughs> and one At one point in the movie, Jackie Chan says, but I don't speak French, when Jackie Chan really speaks fluent French. Chris Tucker bought a home in France for the production of this movie. That sounds like a lie. Um, There's a theme here. Which French-related trivia fact is real? I feel like Jackie Chan does speak fluent in French, so I would go with that one is the truth. Chris Tucker didn't buy a home in France. I'm kind of inclined to agree, but I may just want to disagree just for the sake of not having a tie. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Does Jackie Chan I'm speak French? I'm glad I answered French? first because now Jeremy's psyching himself out. I don't know anything about Jackie Chan. That's a problem. I also don't know anything <laughs> about Chris Tucker. Does also he a own property a home in France? In France. Did he make enough money off of Rush Hour 1 and he 2? He definitely did. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he might own France. That's a good point. I'm going to say, I'm going to agree with Ben. Okay. You guys are correct. Apparently, Jackie <laughs> Chan speaks fluent French, according to IMBD. DB. Oh, <laughs> Whatever. Fuck it. I feel bad for Bob. I don't want him to have to watch uh, a shitty movie I don't again. Know how, I don't know. Dude, because I was going to do the opposite of you on the last one. I, I, I went against my gut. I don't know. I'm pissed. So should we do a quick tiebreaker to see who? Yeah, we know who's the winner. We know who's losing, but we don't know who the biggest movie boy is. Bob, I'm gonna put it on you. Pick a movie, find a fact, come up with another fact. All on the spot. Well, there's not a rush hour for so. All right, so the movie I went with was The Shawshank Redemption, which is the number one movie according to IMBD of all time. DB. I am DB. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Fuck it. Um, M I B D. Okay, so my first possible truth or lie the scene where andy meets red for the first time took nine hours to shoot my second one robert de niro was originally cast to play brooks but there were concerns that he would overshadow the rest of the cast i think the second one's true i would love to retain my title as the big movie boy so just out of pure gamesmanship i don't want to keep going to ties so uh i actually think the first one's true anyways and i think the second one bob was pretty clever with it and he's proud of it are we locked in we're locked in locked in the scene where andy meets red for the first time took nine hours to shoot is correct Woo! let me read back off the rest to of it back andy and reed's opening chat in the prison yard in which reed or red, i'm an idiot <laughs> sorry <laughs> andy and red's opening chat in the prison yard in which red is throwing a baseball took nine hours to shoot morgan freeman threw the baseball for an entire nine hours without a word of complaint he showed up to work the next day with his left arm in a sling the other one I was contemplating contemplating is Morgan Freeman is left-handed. <laughs> Glad you didn't go with that one. <laughs> or Morgan Freeman is right-handed. That was it. I was just gonna really. You should have just done that one. Was the truth? One was the lie. Well, it is official. Ben is still. Back you finished the exact back. same order. The undisputed biggest movie boy. I again fall right in the middle. Bob. Doesn't know shit about movies, apparently. Bob kind of sucks. The when final it comes score to... if it was nine to eight to five. Oh, Bob trailing big. Not, not Some would say that. a blowout. That's just what the analysts are saying. You, you can catch it on ESPN tomorrow. Pepper needs new shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to decide what movie Bob's going to spend six dollars on this week. <laughs> Bob, I got twelve movies on a list here. Seal your fate, one through twelve. I'm going to pick number six. Number six, I believe, is on Disney Plus. Pirates of the Caribbean Four, whatever the subtitle to that movie is. Okay, I can do that. I'm pretty sure I've seen it already, so no problem there. It has a 33, uh, 33 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. How many Tomatoes. did they stop at? Eight, nine. I don't I, know. I, I want to. I say, feel like I stopped at three. I want to say the seventh is coming out this summer. 
to VOD. Yeah, it is on Disney Plus. Uh, ooh, yeah, two. Th- it's this is the tough part, Bob. It's two hours and seventeen minutes. How is it that long? It's a punishment the, right. in more ways than one. This is wild, though. So the budget was four hundred ten million dollars, and the box office was just over a billion dollars. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. And it, apparently, it, it it's a bad movie. That's incredible. Shout out to them. Can is there a correlation between bad movie and box office numbers that this is like would be the number one of all time? Did they think it was going to make thirty billion dollars? Four hundred ten million dollars. That's a lot. Of what money. were they projecting? They they were, they were trying to double their money. I think they were. They t- they succeeded. Holy shit! They bet on black. I don't know. Like that. That's crazy. Well, that's gonna fucking suck. <laughs> that's well, that the is point. It, that is the point for sure. Next week, we can look forward to Bob's 500-word review on Pirates of the Caribbean. What's the subtitle? On Stranger Tides. I've wrote more for this <laughs> podcast than I did in my entire five years in college. You well, wrote that right, five years. <laughs> <laughs> Super senior Bob Liebel. Maybe if you had written more, you'd be better at these <laughs> games ever playing. <laughs> I don't know if there's a correlation there, but it probably wouldn't have hurt. Uh, I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this episode, improvised episode of the Big Movie Boys podcast. Remember to follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, at Big Movie Boys. With the I, not a Boys y. with an I, obviously. What are you, fucking stupid? <laughs> <laughs> BigMovieBoys.com for all the links to the different streaming services, different podcast services, YouTube channel, all that stuff can be found there. Thank you to the four people who made it this far, and we'll see you next week.